So welcome to our online worship this week and thank you for inviting us to be a part of that week. Here in the UK, we're kicking off our six week school break. And so the rectory household will be off for a couple of weeks, which will mean nothing new from me until the middle of August. So I'll leave you in Rob's hands as he chooses something from our back catalogue. This past week has been a time of celebration for me personally. I finally got the official news that I've passed my masters with a merit. But even more importantly, Tracy and I are grandparents for the second time with the birth of Fred to Naomi and George and a brother for Bertie. few moments of quiet let's think of the times when we've made excuses to get out of things that God wanted us to do or when we've said or done things that were wrong let's come to the Lord who is full of love and forgiveness and tell him about those things for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives father forgive us Save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For failing you, not only by what we do, but also by our thoughts and words. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For acting as if we were ashamed to belong to your dear Son, Jesus. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. Together we say, Father, we have failed you often, and humbly ask your forgiveness. Help us so to live that others may see your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Now may the God of love bring you back to himself. Forgive us all for all the things that we have done wrong and assure us of his everlasting love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Teach me, Lord, teach me, Lord, to follow you, to follow you, keep you near, keep you near, in all I do, in all I do, I need your help, I need your help, to get things right, to get things right, to walk by faith, to walk by faith, not just by sight, not just by sight, you're the one, you're the one who shows the way, who shows the way. Be my light, be my light from day to day, from day to day. When my faith, and when my faith put to the test, put to the test, I'll trust. me lord to follow you keep you near in all i do i need your help to get things right to walk by faith not just by sight you're the So our reading this week comes from Matthew chapter 13. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. When the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master! Did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to do, go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then Jesus left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. 
Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers and they will throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. So we're coming up to the time when you can see views just like the ones we've seen. Just up the road, actually in front of Ford Church. If you're lucky, around the edges you'll see poppies. But generally, the farmer has failed if you can see anything other than acres of wheat or barley or other crops. That's because for centuries, agriculture has been working to get as much crop as possible and as few weeds as possible particularly weeds that might cause a problem. So, back 2,000 years and things were different. Now, obviously, there wasn't the mechanical help, so no need for big fields like you get today. The wheat looked different too, taller and more, well, more naturally like grass. That's the sort of wheat field Jesus may have been pointing at when he told this story. So imagine. Everything Jesus described was there in front of his listeners. The wheat and those pesky weeds. Now, I know people say a weed is only a plant in the wrong place. And that's true. But it seems like the weeds Jesus is talking about are really in the wrong place. There once was a farmer who sowed good seed on good ground. But while he slept, an enemy came and sowed tares in among the wheat. Now, a tare is a poisonous weed which looks a lot like wheat in its early stages. If eaten by a person or an animal, nausea would occur, convulsions, and in certain circumstances, even the possibility of death. This was a spiteful act of malice. He's right. It really was a spiteful act of malice. Why? Who knows? But in close-knit communities, people really can love each other or yeah, hate each other with a vengeance. Apparently it did happen because the Romans had a law against it, which must mean they needed to make it a criminal offence. But that's not really important. All we need to think about today is that field with two types of grass, wheat and tares. Plants from good seed and plants from bad seed, safe and dangerous. Jesus said, the field is the world and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. Remember, no weed killer, no mechanical help. It takes a while to see the weeds. By then, they're well and truly mixed in. Even by hand, it would be difficult to pull them out without pulling out the wheat. So, wait. Wait for the harvest. Pull out both, dump the bad, keep the good. So, the world is the field. But we need to kind of connect last week's story and this week's, because we are both the plant and the soil. We discovered that. We discover that our hearts are the soil in which God plants. The heart. Then it was the place where we make decisions. So we decide whether this amazing good seed should be nurtured and cared for and grow to be fruitful. Now, Jesus gives this bigger picture of a world full of plants. And some are, well, they're trouble. And he doesn't pull his punches. He talks about evil, he talks about the devil. Poisonous, damaging, even deathly. But here's the thing, ultimately, that's God's problem. I think this is a really simple story. I think for us, it's a simple lesson. Don't worry about the weeds. 
Just be a good place for good seed to grow. Be thinking, learning, questioning, discerning, praying, worshipping, studying, growing as followers of Jesus on the Jesus way. That will mean we will challenge the evil, the wrong, the unjust, the hateful, and we will live lives opposite to all that, lives full of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And we will spread that Jesus-like character across the field, spreading good soil, enabling others to make good decisions. But there will be weeds, always weeds. <laughs> and ultimately, they're God's concern. We just get on and be good wheat, bearing fruit. In the end, I guess it's about choosing good over bad, which is, of course, what many, most people want to do. What we're adding to that is the farmer's helping hand and a whole field of us doing it together under his care and nurture. Lord, you have my heart and I will search Jesus, take my life and lead me on. Lord, you have my heart, and I will search for yours. Let me be to you a sad.
So may the peace of the Lord Christ go with us wherever he may send us. May he guide us through the wilderness, protect us through the storm. May he bring us home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown us. May he bring us home rejoicing once again into our doors. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with each one of us and remain with us now and forever. Amen. As we leave this place, fill us with your love and grace that we may be more like you in every single step. we